So last night I got called out to a customer's house to disconnect a cooker um, because they're having a, a new cooker delivered today and they needed the old one disconnected and taken away and so I'm back here this evening to um, connect in the new cooker. Um, a couple of things happened yesterday um, so I thought I would perhaps do a video on me connecting up the new cooker circuit. Um, I thought it'd be interesting to a couple of things that I found which are very must be very common when we replace or when we when people come across connecting up cooker circuits um, so a couple of things that I that happened to me it must happen to other people so I thought I'd video this one the old cooker has been taken away and um, and the cooker is just out of camera at the moment um, and so what one of the things I wanted to to show you on the video when I disconnected the old cooker was the fact that it was wired up in the old red and black 2.5mm twin and CPC. As you can see the CPC isn't even there, it's actually broken off inside because it had burnt out, completely burnt out and as you can see there the line conductor is also completely melted. The cooker still worked though, but when I actually disconnected it, the neutral was okay, but this line conductor was really loose in the terminals. And so obviously that's no good. Um, but, you know, they're the sort of things that we do come across. So I've got rid of the 2.5 and we're gonna wire it up in six mil. There's a couple of reasons why I'm gonna do it in six mil. Um, it's because the circuit at the moment is wired up in six mil. Um, it's protected by a 32 amp circuit breaker um, and the cooker that I'm wiring it up is a 8 kilowatt cooker, um, freestanding cooker. Now when you apply diversity to that um, and it means that the cooker when diversity is applied the amount of current that's going to be using is about 25-26 amps. Um, the actual customer that I work that I'm working for she does do a lot of cooking and so the cooker will often be using sort of two to three hobs and both ovens. Because the circuit itself is already wired up in six mil, the cable that goes from the back of the um, outlet plate, the cooker outlet plate to the actual cooker should also be the same size as the circuit cable, as the circuit cable, which is, like I said, six mil. So here's the six mil. And so I'm going to now turn the camera around and we're just going to connect up, connect this six mil into the back of the cooker. So here we have the back of the cooker and this is the actual connection plate here. So what we have is the line, the neutral and the CPC. And so sometimes it can be really awkward to know which one is the line and neutral connections because sometimes it, they're not very clear but it you, you may not be able to see very well on there but you can I can clearly see an L there and an N there and then I can see the earth symbol there on this one on this cooker as well we also have this sticker just here that also says the connections there, so it's got the supply load and then it's got the terminal one which is the line although it says live there terminal two is the neutral and then it's got the earth symbol just there so I'm just going to prepare the six mil so all I do is just nick around the outer grey um, protection, the mechanical protection, and then I just bun my knife nice and gently down along the CPC, and I'm just just to where, as you can see there, just to where I've nicked nicked it there, and then I should just pull that through, and it should just come off. Same with this one. It comes off relatively 
nice and neatly. So now it comes to actually connecting this bit of cable into the cooker. Initially all I'm going to do is just lay it on, lay it into position and the CPC I'm just going to move out the way for the time being. I'm just going to concentrate on these two, the line and the neutral. So sometimes it can be a bit fiddly, especially while I'm trying to record it as well. It is certainly a bit tricky, but it's going to be in a position something like that. So all I'm going to do is just cut the cables off. Okay, so there we have, we've stripped the ends of the, um, to expose roughly about 12, 15 mil of copper. And I'm just gonna twist those up. Like so. And then I'm just gonna cut the ends off flush so they're nice and neat. And so that one looks just like that. I've also noticed that I've caught a little bit of the grey mechanical protection. It's a little bit annoying, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change that now. Into the connections, just make sure this is these aren't done fully. I think they already are. And so I'm just gonna off them up into it just to make sure. We have enough. Like I said, these can be really awkward sometimes. I think that's okay. I'm just going to cut a slight, a little bit more off. But let's see how that looks now. When we offer it up, I think that looks nice and neat there. So all I'm going to do is just tighten the connections up. just so it takes hold of the cable. Just like that. And then we've got this bit here. And so this bit is a little clamp and it just clamps over in, into there. So, okay. put the screw in there. Let's just tighten this up. And these can be really quite awkward. And there's on like a little ratchet on this side. So you have to keep pushing it in as you're doing it. Okay then, so the CPC, as hopefully you can see there, it just goes into there. So there's not an awful lot of space, quite often people just take it straight across into there. But I don't quite like doing that, what I will do, I'll bend it up and then I'll bring it back and then I'll take it in, something like that. something like that. So what I can do, I can just cut that about there. I'll stretch it again. And obviously we need to remember to put the correct sleeving on. So I'll opt for some three mil sleeving. That. 
So I'm trying to do this without covering the camera up. It's really quite awkward. And so then that one should nice and neatly go into there. Hopefully that's relatively nice and neat, certainly neater than what it was. And then we can just tighten up these connections here. Okay, so I think that there looks okay. So now we've, I know I've wired up the actual cooker. All that's left to do now is to actually wire it up into or connect it up into the cooker plate on the wall here. And then behind me just up here is the isolation switch for that cooker. So obviously I've taken the front cover off <clears throat> and we've exposed three terminals. There's the line, there's the CPC or the earth terminal and the neutral terminal on the right hand side. Yesterday when we did this we carried out safe isolation as per uh, many of the other videos that we've done. Um, this time however I thought I would do it slightly differently uh, maybe how it may be done on site but I just want to do it a different, slightly different way just so we can um, maybe get some discussions going, some th thoughts and ideas of is this a good enough way to do the safe isolation or not. So, is the double pole switch. Now normally, carrying out safe isolation, we would isolate the circuit. In this case, I haven't isolated the circuit. All I'm relying on is the actual double pole switch, because it is double pole, so that means it will switch both the line and the neutral off. So all I'm going to do is actually rely on this switch. Now I know that this is how it is often done. Okay, and I just want to see what people's thoughts are, whether or not it's safe or, or not. So first thing I'm going to do is just confirm polarity. Okay, so the circuit breaker is turned on, that switch is turned on, so those terminals there are live. Okay, so to confirm polarity, so first we're just going to go on to the neutral conductor then we're going to go on to the line conductor and as you can see there we've got 240 volts I'm then going to go on to the earth terminal and then the neutral terminal there's zero volts and then I'm going to go back between the neutral and then I'm going to go between the earth and the line terminal and again that's 240 odd volts so that's polarity is confirmed. Not only is polarity confirmed, it's also confirming that these, um, these voltage indicators are working. So now I'm gonna turn this off simply by operating that switch. So then I can carry out to see if these terminals have actually turned off or if not, if they're still live. So again, we'll just go onto the neutral terminal first, go onto the line, there's nothing there. We'll go between the neutral and the, the earth and the neutral. Again, there's nothing there. And then last, we'll go between the earth or line. And as you can see, there's nothing there. And then I've confirmed that this is now dead. Now, obviously when we carry out safe isolation, there is one more test to do, and that is also to confirm these against a known source again. We have a proven unit. So now we have the, need to wire up the six mil. Into this. 
So we're just going to strip. So we'll just strip some of the six mil. So this time we don't need to strip back as much. So I'm just going to nick the sides. And I'm going to just run down the CPC to the neck. But what I'm making sure is that I've got sufficient amount of cable so the, so the cooking can, can be pulled completely out and, and can potentially be worked on without having to disconnect it straight away. So again, I'm just going to pull the CPC out the way because I don't want to do anything with that just yet. So what I'm trying to do here is just fork both the line and the neutral and just roughly position it into a position that I'm happy with. Something like that. And also the CPC will go to there as well. And then you will cut it approximately about there. And then we'll double back. This one, so that'll come to about there. So, something looking like this. Yeah. Just tighten those up. Put this clamp back on. Not to do these too tight because it'll quite easily snap this clamp if I'm not careful and so I think that looks okay now you can see there's a where you can see where we have double back the CPC but it does go in there quite sufficiently hopefully that should be, be okay let's just tighten terminals up nice and tight okay I think that's quite quite tight let's just double check them Okay, I think that's okay now. So now I'm going to turn on, I'm going to put back the cover plate. So we have, that was the double pole isolator. And then we have here, again, the back of the cooker. So what we're gonna do now, is I've actually already tested the circuit. 
I've tested the um, the circuit of the continuity of the CPC to make sure that it is continuous all the way through to the circuit and I've done the insulation resistance test. I've also done, um, there's also an RCD protecting these circuits so again I've done the RCD testing that was relevant. Um, the one test I haven't done is a live earth fault loop impedance test um, otherwise known as the ZS test. So I think what we're going to do, again I'm, it's working live, it does mean working live but I'm going to carry out that test now and so I'm just going to turn the circuit on and, that on. and the test automatically tests, it detects 240 volts takes approximately 5 to 10 seconds like I said if we'd use the two lead high test that would probably knock the circuit out. The test automatically carries out, it detects the voltage and automatically carries out the test like I said previously 5 to 10 seconds it's on a very low current to not trip the RCD and that has given me a reading of 0.66 ohms the circuit breaker that protects this circuit is a 32 amp breaker and so we are below the maximum ZS value um, it needs to be below 1.1 ohms which is the maximum ZS for the um, um, for a 32 amp circuit breaker so that's nice so that's below that <coughs> the 80% value the on-site guide value um, therefore if there is a problem this circuit should the circuit breaker should disconnect in time so what I'm also going to do is do the same test but now I'm going to actually just clip on to the metal work of the cooker so I've put my cro crocodile clip onto the actual metal work of the cooker and then I'll just do the test again between the line and neutral just to confirm but that is also okay. I've also carried out an RCD test. I've also carried out the dead testing as well, the continuity of the CPCs and insulation resistance of the circuit. I've also carried out the bonding, okay, to make sure that the bonding that goes to both the gas and the water is also sufficient, which it is. Do another video, I think, of how I would possibly do a minor work certificate for this job. I know there's people out there saying they wouldn't bother doing a minor work certificate for a job like this but it doesn't hurt doing one and so I think we'll do that but we'll do it for another video. So the cooker is now installed it needs to be run up for about an hour or so as per the manufacturing instructions obviously the packaging and the contents need to be removed and we'll make sure that it all works. Um, like I've said, um, I took the cooker out yesterday and found that there was various problems. And so today all I've done is I've replaced the 2.5mm cable with a 6mm cable. Um, because the old one had burned out anyway and it just wasn't good enough. Um, I've carried out the safe isolation using the double pole switch only. Not the normal safe isolation method that we would probably adopt but again I haven't moved from this location and so there's been no um, there's been no risk shall we say of me having to walk away and leave it in a dangerous position and so now we have a cooker it's been tested the various tests have been carried out such as the loop impedance here the fault loop impedance or the ZS test I think that's the most important test the RCD test and the dead testing has also been carried out along with the um, along with the bonding of the um, gas and water the extraneous um, conductive parts. Um, all that's left to do now is to tidy up um, and then I'll fill out a certificate, a minor work certificate and I think it will be the first 18th edition certificate that I've filled out um, now that the 18th edition is live.